हेलो एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग हाउ आर यू ऑल सो यस वी आर अगेन बैक विद द केमिस्ट्री एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू हैव द डिस्कशन ऑन सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस व्हिच वर प्रीवियसली आस्क्ड फ्रॉम मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल सेक्शन यस्टरडे वी इवन डिस्कस्ड अबाउट मेटलर्जी राइट सो लेट्स सी हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर रेडी फॉर दिस सेशन वी हैव फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन हियर एंड व्हाट्स द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज परसेंटेज ऑफ लेड इन लेड पेंसिल इज डैश लेड इन द लेड पेंसिल Let's see who can give this answer. So everyone who's there in the session, I want your attendance, please. Can you give me your attendance? Yeah. Need attendance from everyone. Yesterday, when we were discussing about it, what I was taking a question of German silver. Remember, I was talking about German silver. And when I was discussing about German silver, I told you what all things were there. There was a copper. there was copper then there was nickel and then there was zinc do you remember this part copper nickel zinc i guess you remember this part right and what i told you i told you when i'm talking about this german silver from the name it seems as if silver is there the silver that is coming from germany right but it's not that it's not that let me tell you in the german silver there is no such silver and i gave you the trick also if a person will sit and understand about this and then if i say there is no such silver over there what do you think you think silver kyu nahi hai ji what silver kyu nahi hai ji kyu nahi hai ji that is q copper nahi nickel and z zinc so here german silver is consisting of q nahi hai ji kya nahi hai silver to silver it was not present there so we have ishan here hello ishan how are you so yes what i was saying the question is now from lead part in the lead pencil so if someone is asking you what is the percentage of lead in the lead pencil let me tell you this lead pencil this word doesn't mean that lead is present there very important previously asked remember there is no such lead present in the lead pencil so just remember this part fine so yes, what is the correct answer the correct answer is going to be zero that is option number a is going to be the correct answer over here fine so what i was talking about i was talking about lead in the lead pencil it would be zero in the similar way if i talk about the silver in the german silver it is also zero very important let's move forward now so here option number a is the correct answer next the material used in the manufacture of lead pencil is dash now this is from cgl steno and date to 2010 cgl 2005 2002 steno it has been asked many times so what will be its answer can you answer this my question is the material which is used in the manufacture of lead pencil is dash so we have totally understood so if i'll just see at the second option so what's that here it is given in the lead pencil in the lead pencil there must be lead right from the name it seems but i've already told you there is no such lead present in this pencil if lead is not present what is present So if I talk about the allotropes of carbon, what allotropes of carbon? So in the allotropes of carbon, allotropes of carbon, here what is going to be the correct answer? So we have graphite over here. That is option number A is going to be the correct answer. Next, next question is plaster of Paris is made by the partial dehydration of what? So is it green vitriol, blue vitriol, gypsum salt, or epsom salt? What is the correct answer over here? So waiting for the answer from everyone. Plaster of Paris is made by the partial dehydration of what? Answer please. Yeah, can you answer this? My question is, if I'm talking about the plaster of Paris. so we are where we find it actually so whenever there's a bone fracture you might have seen there's a some structure which is tied here right that is plaster of paris apart from that the statues which are made they are made of plaster of paris now how this plaster of paris is actually made so if i talk about plaster of paris please remember it's made from gypsum salt now gypsum salt what is it here if i talk about gypsum salt can you tell me its formula it would be caso4 dot 2h2 right now if i talk about the gypsum gypsum salt since we are talking about dehydration 
See, from the name itself, it is clear. Dehydration, that is, here we are talking about loss of water. So, here what is going to happen? In this process, this two parts of H2O will be converted into the half part of H2O. So, what is going to be the correct answer? It would be CaSO4 dot half H2O. And here, please remember, these two parts are now only half part. And here, what has happened? Here, dehydration, right? So, dehydration of gypsum salt is giving you plaster of Paris, which is actually used in these statues. In these statues. Or apart from that, these statues, you can talk about plaster of Paris. Yes. So, I guess these points are clear. Moving forward with the next question now. So, please remember, this gypsum, this plaster of Paris, both are important. And yes, whenever there's a bone fracture, we use this plaster of Paris, right? So here, option number C is going to be the correct answer. Next, which among the following halogens is most reactive? Yeah, so this is the question. What? Which among the following halogens is the most reactive? So, if I talk about the halogens, which particular group is it? We knew when we are talking about the periodic table, we had 1, 2, 3 and so on till 18th group. 18th group we are aware of, it is what? It is noble gas. But if I talk about the 17th group, the 17th group is what? The 17th group is actually your halogens. What's that? That is actually your halogen. And here, what all are present? Here we can talk about fluorine, then chlorine, then bromine, then iodine. All these are present. But if someone asks you about the reactivity, please remember the correct answer is going to be what? The correct answer would be fluorine. That is option number A is going to be the correct answer. So what's the correct answer over here? The correct answer is option number A. Next. Non-metal found in liquid state. So, which one is the non-metal which is found in the liquid state? So, you have four options here. What is going to be the correct answer? Answer please. And everyone who is there in the session, kindly let me know your name so that I can start interacting with you. Yeah. So, we have Ishan here apart from Ishan. Who all are there? Can kindly tell me your names. So, yes, what I was talking about, I was talking about a non-metal which is found in the liquid state. Now, which of the following is non-metal? Obviously, since the options are given, there might be no non-metals. But we must be aware of which particular element is metal, which is non-metal. So, do we have any trick? It's not about trick, but it's a logic. If I'll go with the groups, that is 1 till 18. If I'll go from 1 to 18, that is when I'm moving from left to right, non-metallic character actually increases. Why? Because in the starting part, they are able to donate the electrons. And the one who donate the electrons are known as metals. And if I will start moving towards the 17th group, if I will move towards 17th group, they are actually accepting the electrons. They do what? They are accepting the electrons and hence they are known as non-metals. Now the options which are given over here are bromine, nitrogen, fluorine, chlorine. That means we are talking about this group, right? They are actually accepting the non uh, this electrons. And hence, all these are non-metals which are present over here. Now, one more thing. Why I have told only up till up till 17? So, we have Kavita here. Hello, Kavita. Good evening. How are you? So, yes, if I talk about this group 18, do you think it would be donating or accepting the electrons? Kavita, do you have an answer for this? My question is, this 18th group, Ishan, can you answer this? If 18th group we are talking about, we can consider any of the example. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, anything. Are they going to accept the electrons? Yes or no? Will they accept the electron? Obviously not. Why? Because their outermost shell is already filled. Correct? They are actually noble gases. Or we can say inert gases. Inert gases. Now please remember, their outermost shell is already filled. They do not want to react with anyone. They should not react with anyone. Why? since they are already stable. So here, please remember the non-metals which we are talking about are present here in the ending part of the group, but before 18th. So yes, the non-metal which is actually found in the liquid state is what? That is your bromine. Next. 
द केमिकल नेम ऑफ हाइपो कॉमनली यूज इन फोटोग्राफी इज वॉट हाइपो सो वॉट इज इट द केमिकल नेम ऑफ हाइपो is which is commonly used in photography is what is it sodium thiosulfate is it sodium nitrate is it sodium chloride or is it silver nitrate what is the correct answer over here and remember all these questions are previously asked this question is asked from fci so can you answer this part hypo what's that and let me tell you there was a experiment which was conducted when you were in 8th or 9th standard and what was that that experiment was actually known as chemical sunset what was that that was known as chemical sunset in order to show the chemical chemical sunset we had to use this hypo solution what we used to do we used to bring this sodium thiosulfate and we used to keep it in a beaker from one end we used to apply the torch and the rays which were coming which were actually passing from this beaker it was actually showing a moment it, it actually seemed as if sunset is going to be there right so yes please remember the hypo is actually what that is sodium thiosulfate which is actually used in the photography okay so here option number a is going to be the correct answer next chemical formula for the washing soda is dash now everyone who's there in the session i actually re require your answers so that i can go in the depth by giving more and more examples if you will interact with me i can go in the more depth without the interaction i can only tell about this particular question and option right so yes if you have any sort of doubt please let me know i'll clear them up so yes chemical formula of washing soda is what what is the chemical formula for this washing soda is it na2so4 dot 10s2 is it nahco3 is it na2co3 dot 10s2 or is it caoh whole twice what is the correct answer over here very basic question but very important why because there are two questions which are repeatedly asked one is from washing soda and one is from baking soda so valmiki uh, okay kavita is saying sir, that it would be nahco3 ishan is with a that is na2so4 or 10s2 okay so let me tell you when we are talking about this washing soda na here the correct answer is going to be what here the correct answer would be na2co3 fine so both the options which were given here are not correct so please remember whenever we'll talk about baking soda then we can talk about sodium bicarbonate but if i'm talking about washing soda that is going to be sodium carbonate fine so yes okay garima garima can you answer this part please so yeah vikram aite here and vikram aite is with c option that is na2co3 and that's true so ha huh, then it's okay then it's okay garima uh this line was important actually fine okay so let's come back to a point what i was talking about i was actually talking about what this washing soda so please remember garima vikram aitya then kavita ishan let's think about a situation when you have given this ssc cgl examination and it's clear now you are saying sir you have to give the party as i always say i am never going to take party from your end i'll be giving the party fine and in that party am i asking you to bring your clothes and we'll be washing there no in that party we'll be having food right after having the food what we'll say okay sir bye bye what i'm saying after having the food party we are saying bye so please remember the bye word is actually going to come where in the baking soda because baking soda will be used in the food and after the party we will say bye so sodium bicarbonate is going to come in baking soda in washing soda it will be only sodium carbonate very very important thing do not forget okay so here what is the correct answer the correct answer is going to be option number c got my point so let's see you have understood this trick or not there's a next question for you the common name of sodium bicarbonate is what let's see who gives this answer now so garima vikram aite ishan kavita we have all the candidates i have just given you the trick and what was the trick the trick was where we were talking about party right after the party we will say bye so what kind of party baking of food or washing of clothes just have a look at the options i've just given you the trick yep so i guess vikram aite is going to be the first one or garima kavita ishan who would be the first one to answer this and the first one who is going to answer this is going to get the chocolate obviously the virtual one right now 
Okay, so I have already given the trick when I'm talking about the sodium bicarbonate. Just have a look at the bi. I've already told you what we'll do after having the food, we'll say bi, right? Garima, only the part where we are talking about loving can be this teaching style. That's okay, fine. So let's have the selection and then we'll talk about it. Let's come back to a point. Yes, what I was saying, I was talking about the sodium bicarbonate. So please remember by what is going to come in the baking soda. Sodium bicarbonate. Now, next question please. Helium gas is filled in the balloon instead of hydrogen because it's dash. What's the reason behind it? So Vikram Ayate has given a answer and that was true, Vikram. I guess I'm getting your comments quite late. So yeah, helium gas is filled in the balloon instead of hydrogen. What's the reason behind it? We can even use this hydrogen, right? Uh, Vikram, I guess we are getting comments quite late, right? Is it so? Bro, can you check? Okay, so Vikram Ayat is here with option A, that is it is lighter than hydrogen. Okay, one of the reasons, maybe. So Kavita, do you seriously think this is going to be the answer? Or is there any other option? All the other, all the candidates which are present here, if I talk about helium gas, see, it is lighter than air, that's true. But there must be some other issue. Why actually your hydrogen is never used? There is a reason. And that is, it is actually combustible in nature. That is, it will start burning. And it's very serious issue, right? So one of the reason can be this. But the main thing is that it is non-combustible. That is, helium gas is the one where combustion is not going to take place. And just imagine this scenario. You are in the hot air balloon. If you are using this gas, hydrogen, that particular balloon in which you are actually traveling, fine, what is going to happen? It may burn. So that's why what is happening? We are using helium. Very, very important point. Obviously, helium is lighter. So that's why it is actually used in the balloons. But the main reason why hydrogen is not used and helium is preferred, why? Because it is not combustible. Okay. So yes, option number C is going to be the correct answer. Next. Okay. So we have already, okay. I have given the answer directly, but let me tell you. The metal which is actually non-toxic in nature is what? The metal which is non-toxic in nature is gold, right? And one more thing, tomorrow we have Dhanteras, so we'll be going for this gold, right? So I have a question for you. If I talk about gold, none of the acid is going to react with it. So can you tell me, what is that particular thing which actually reacts with the gold? Because this is the question which is again and again asked in the examination with some ratio. So I just want to ask, which is that particular acid which is going to react with gold? One is HCl. Second is H2SO4. Third is, uh, I'll say HNO3. And the fourth one is, let me write any of the name, Aqua Regia. Okay, so what is going to be the correct answer? I'm asking, what is, which is the particular option which is going to react with gold? So, in other words, I'll say gold is reacting with which of the following options. Can you answer this? Garim, are you there? Vikram Aitya, Ishan, Kavita, answer please. And my question is, which of the following is going to react with gold? And tomorrow is Dhanteras, you all will, will be buying gold, obviously. So, yes, I want to know this answer. Very important. Apart from this question, I have one more question, which is again asked in the examination again and again. So yes, very good Vikramati. The correct answer is going to be Aqua Regia. All the candidates who are from Hindi medium, that is Amal Raj. Very good. So my one more point is, when I'm talking about this Aqua Regia, when I'm talking about this Aqua Regia, so there is some ratio of HCl and HNO3. It is the combination of both. So please remember there's a trick. Here already three is present. This is only a trick. There is no such concept there. It is only a trick to remember. 3 is already here, right? So we'll apply 3 here <coughs> and one part here. So this is the ratio of HCl and HNO3 in Aqua Regia. Another very, very important question. It is asked in the examination many times. So please do not forget. In the Aqua Regia, the ratio of HCl and HNO3 is 3 is to 1. Do not forget. Fine? Never forget. All these questions are very, very important. All are asked previously. Next question, please. Why helium gas is used in balloons? So we have already... Uh, discussed about it. So, need answer. Why helium gas is used in balloons? I have just explained this part, right? 
सो आंसर प्लीज सो कविता ईशान विक्रम आदित्य गरिमा एवरी वन वाई हिलियम गैस इज यूज इन बैलून जस्ट टोल्ड यू अबाउट इज लास्ट टाइम द क्वेश्चन वॉज एक्चुअली फ्रेम्ड इन एन अदर वे देर डेट वॉज आज Why helium is preferred over hydrogen? Here, the question is why helium gas is used in balloons? Because it is having atomic number two. Because it is lighter than air. It's one of the constituents. It is actually one of the constituent of water, or it's a noble gas. So yes, Vikram Ayth is absolutely correct. It is lighter than air. So please remember both the facts. Obviously, it is lighter than air. Second thing, it is non-combustible. So that's why helium is actually used in balloons. Very important. हेलो शुभम हैप्पी दिवाली सेम टू यू ब्रो ओके सो हियर ऑप्शन नंबर बी इज गोइंग टू बी द करेक्ट आंसर मेन कंस्टेंट ऑफ लिक्विड ब्लीच इज डैश या कविता दैट वाज टोटली करेक्ट सो माय क्वेश्चन इज मेन कंस्टेंट ऑफ लिक्विड ब्लीच इज व्हाट सो इज इट एच सी एल एन ए सी एल सोडियम हाइपोक्लोरेट और सोडियम हाइपोक्लोराइट नाउ देर अ पॉइंट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट आर स्टमक Our our stomach actually has HCl. What HCl? So Vikramayath is saying something. I'll attempt all answer. Please. Hard. Okay, Vikramayath. Fine. So we'll be af only after I get your answer. Don't only then I'll proceed. Fine. Cool. Let's have a look at this question. Main constituent of liquid bleach is dash. So is it HCl? If I talk about the constituent of liquid bleach, please remember HCl is actually present in our stomach, right? and here in our stomach there's one more enzyme that is known as pepsin and this pepsin enzyme is actually helping in the digestion of protein very important and if i talk about renin one more enzyme renin now this is from bio part this is present in babies where milk is actually converted into curd milk is converted into the curd if i talk about nacl table salt sodium chloride so this sodium chloride is actually present in your food so whatever you feel like sir i like egg curry i like chicken whatever you like every day <coughs> every day you use this table salt right so using this salt we must be aware of this formula also that is nacl now one more thing is there government has actually used this particular concept that whichever salt you are eating it must contain iodine right so this is actually the plan of government so that everyone receives the correct amount of iodine in the body and hence we can be goiter free so here vikram ayath has given the answer sodium hypochlorite and yes vikram ayath you are totally correct here option number d is going to be the correct answer that is sodium hypochlorite fine so if i talk about the bleaching part sodium hypochlorite is the correct answer next which of the following is used in welding broken pieces of iron rails and parts of machine so whenever we are talking about welding what is going to be the correct answer over here so we have aluminum sulfate sorry aluminum sulfate solder aluminum powder or none of these what is going to be the correct answer here please answer which of the following is used in the welding broken pieces of iron rails and parts of machine so can you answer this part or ishan can you answer this when we are talking about the broken heart what we are actually going to do i guess ishan would be the perfect person to answer this Vikram Ayath is saying, sir, it would be C. That is aluminium powder, and that's absolutely correct, Vikram. Ah, uh, we have discussed this part in morning as well, right? So yes, if I'm talking about aluminium powder, that is going to be the correct answer. Aluminium, aluminium powder. From the name itself, it is clear. We are actually doing what? We are making the small, small pieces of aluminium, and we are using that in the welding part. Fine. So for the welding purpose, we are using aluminium powder. So option number C would be correct. Now, next question is hydrogen sulfide is what? Now these questions. were actually discussed this particular 5 to 6 questions are there which we have already discussed we are discussing that again because in the ending i have some questions of those iso bars iso mers we have to discuss that part right okay so okay so in the yesterday session uh, yeah fine so yes hydrogen sulfide is what is it colorless odorless gas or is it yellowish gas with the pungent odor is it reddish gas with the fishy odor or colorless gas with the rotten egg smell what is the correct answer here and everyone who is there in the session kindly like it and share it so vikram ayath is totally correct if i talk about this hydrogen sulfide please remember it is rotten egg smell it's gas it actually smells like a rotten egg and yes ah uh, no 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 it's not yellowish 
it's the colorless gas with the rotten egg smell if i talk about hydrogen sulfide i'll tell you its formula is h2s fine okay let's move forward now next question please tip of matchstick contains what so if i'll talk about matchbox if i'll talk about matchbox so in that match if i'll talk about the topmost part that topmost part is made up of what? So Anushka Sharma is with answer D. That was totally correct, Anushka. So now we have question with the tip of matchstick. So this is the box, matchbox. So if I talk about this matchbox, can you tell me? It is made up of what? Sorry. Sorry. If I talk about this matchbox, this structure, it is made up of what? Totally correct, Vikram. Absolutely correct. If I talk about phosphorus, it is actually your red phosphorus, right? Okay, next question. Green color which is seen in the firework displays due to the chloride of which salt? Sorry, chloride of what? Green color seen in the firework display. Diwali is near, right? And we are going to burn fire. We are going to use this firework now. We will be using crackers. We will be burning them. So, we will be getting all those red color structures, green color structures. So, Anushka Sharma has given red phosphorus answer. That was totally correct. What about this question? The green color which is seen in the fireworks, it is because of what? Vikram Aitya is with option C, that is barium. Very good. That's totally correct. If I talk about the green color which is seen in the firework, that's what? That's actually because of the presence of barium. Totally correct. Yep. So, Anushka, I guess you are also with the same option and all the other candidates who are there. This is barium. Fine. Now, one more thing. The inert gas which is used as a beacon light is dash. I have told about this. If I will talk about the hotels. In the hotels also, we are using one of the light which is actually able to penetrate through the fog as well. From fog also, this light can actually pass and it's very important. So, can you tell me what is going to be correct answer? The inert gas which is used as a beacon light is dash. So, is it krypton, argon, helium or neon? What is going to be the correct answer here? Yes, please. The inert gas which is used as a beacon light is what? So, is it krypton, argon, helium or neon? Do you think in the light we are going to use krypton? But yes, when you are talking about argon, the time you are giving me answer, Vikram has already given the answer D. Anushka, what's your answer? Till the time Anushka is giving me answer, I am telling you. If I talk about this argon, argon is actually used in bulb. Not the present one. Present bulbs which we use right now are LED bulbs, right? But once upon a time, when we were quite small, at that time those yellow colored bulbs were there, right? Those yellow colored bulbs were filled with argon gas. Apart from that, when I try to make this bulb, there was a wire which was actually connected in such a manner. This wire was made up of tungsten. Now, this is very, very important. Do not forget, this wire was made up of tungsten because there was a reason. In spite of being at a very high temperature, it never used to melt. One more thing. If I'll go with those heaters, if I'll go with the heaters, so the heaters which are actually having the element, heaters element is made up of what? Can you answer this part? Heater's element is made up of what? So, I want the answer. Till then, till then, let me tell you answer for this. The inert gas which is used as a beacon light is actually a neon. And let me tell you the feature of this neon. Neon can actually penetrate through the fog as well. So, it is very important to know. In the hotels, the light which are used, their neon gas is also used. Okay. So, I was talking about heater, a uh, heater's element. So, can you tell me about this? It is made up of what? All these questions are very, very important. It is also asked in the previous year questions. So, yes, heater's element is made up of what? It is made up of nichrome. It is made up of nichrome. Fine? Okay. Yes, Anushka, your answer is also correct. Absolutely correct. Okay. So, we are moving forward now. Hydrogen was discovered by whom? So, was the Boyle, Charles, Cavendish or Priestley? Answer. Hydrogen was discovered by whom? Now, hydrogen is actually a non-metal. So, I will write here. Till the time you are giving me answer. Hydrogen is a non-metal. If I talk about its isotopes, then we can talk about protium, deuterium or tritium. 
right? And the most important thing is there must be someone who has actually discovered him. Oh, sorry, who has actually discovered it. So what is the correct answer here? Please remember that correct answer is going to be your Cavendish. That is option number C will be the correct answer. Okay, so let's move forward now with the next question. Gas used in the production of vegetable ghee is dash. Now we are talking about the process that is known as hydrogenation. Gas which is used in the production of vegetable ghee. And everyone who is there in the session kindly like it and share it, please. Question is, gas which is used in the production of vegetable ghee is dash. That is hydrogen and that's totally correct. When I'm talking about this hydrogenation process, it is actually used in the production of vegetable ghee. So here, here option number A is going to be the correct answer. Let's move forward to the next question. Ozone contains what? So ozone contains only oxygen, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, carbon. What is the correct answer? Yeah, his full name was Henry Cavendish. Can you give this answer? Ozone contains what? Ozone contains what? Answer please. Totally correct. So, Anushka, do you have any doubt there? See, let me tell you his full name was Henry Cavendish. Um, Vikram, I'll give you answer. Wait. See, uh, where's the question? Yeah. If I talk about his Cavendish, his full name was Henry Cavendish. And he discovered it in 1766. No need to mug up this year. No need to mug up this year. But yes, you must remember this name. It is actually asked. Okay. So we were with this question, ozone, right? So if I talk about ozone, please remember, ozone's formula is O3. And when I'll just have a look at this formula, it's only oxygen which is present here. There is no such hydrogen, there is no such nitrogen, there is no such carbon. Only thing which is present here is oxygen. And yes, ozone is containing only and only oxygen. Now there's another question. Another question which is commonly asked in the examination is what? When I'm talking about Earth's atmosphere, we have ozone here. And because of the presence of ozone, the sunlight which is coming here, so I'll talk about UV radiations, it is preventing UV radiations to enter the Earth. So that's why this ozone is of very, very great importance. Now the thing is that, what if I talk about this width? I'll use blue color over here. What if I talk about this width? So this width has some unit, right? So can you tell me what is the unit to measure this width? Very important question. It is asked in the exam examination again and again. So this is the ozone's formula, one question. Second is it is preventing from UV radiation where we can talk about greenhouse effect and all. Third question is, what is the unit to measure this width? Very important. Width of this ozone is measured by what? Which particular unit? So do you have an answer for this? It is asked many times in the examination. Width to measure the ozone. What is the unit? No one? So let me write for you. Here, when I talk about the width, please remember, it is measured by Dobson. I'm marking double star over here. It is important one. Fine. So yes, Dobson is the unit which is used to... Very good, Vikramath. Very good. Awesome. So Dobson is the unit which is used to measure this width. Fine. Okay. So now there's a question which I'll actually draw on the board and I want to ask you. Here, let us assume this is water. Let us assume this is water. I'm using red pen over here. Here is an iceberg. Here, here is the iceberg. And this iceberg is of 10 meter here. From the surface of water till the top, we have iceberg which is present here. Just a second. Yeah. So this is its length. Now, if I want to ask the total length of iceberg, can you tell me what would be the total length of iceberg which is present here? Very important question. Do not forget, I am actually drawing the diagram because I want to explain this part. My question is, when I am talking about this iceberg, what is the total length of this iceberg? Can you tell me? 
there must be some length, right? So if you want, I can write the option as well. Its total length will be 10 meter. Second, its total length will be 100 meter. Third is, its total length will be 20 meter. Fourth option is, its total length is going to be 90 meter. So let's see who can give this answer. Answer please and yes, it's very important. It's very, very important question because it is asked in the examination many times. It's obvious. It may be in another way. It may be asked, but we must have the clarity for this answer. So I'll be waiting for 15 to 20 seconds because I guess I'm getting comments quite late from as Vikram told me. But yes, I want answer from everyone. Everyone, no matter who ever it is, answer may be wrong. But if you'll give this answer now, right here, in the main examination, it will be correct for sure. So answer please. My question is, if ice work, this is the surface of water. I'll write for you. This is the surface of water. And from the surface till this part, this is actually of 10 meter. I want to know the total length of this iceberg. So Vikram Ait is going with option number two, that is 100 meter. Okay. So I guess Anushka and all the other candidates, you are also going with Vikram Ait. Please remember, whenever we'll talk about this ice, which is there on the water, it is in the ratio of one is to nine. That is nine part of this particular part will be underwater. Kavita is going with A, that is 10 meter. Okay. So please, Kavita, Vikram, Ayati, Anushka, everyone who is there in the session, please remember it is going to be in the ratio of 1 is to 9, that is 9 part is going to be here. So if I talk about this 10 meter, that means it would be 90 meter. If I measure the whole length, it would be 10 plus 90, that is it is going to be 100 meter. And you must have seen this in your Instagram part. You might have seen it in your Facebook. Many times it is shown that ice work is only this much, which is shown above water. But within water, it is very, very high or it is too long. What's the reason behind it? Please remember here when ice, ice actually flows or uh, floats on the water, here the ratio remains this. That is 1 is to 9. Very important. Do not forget. Okay. There's one more question. One more question which is repeatedly asked. When I talk about the rusting of iron, when we talk about rusting of iron, when iron is actually rusted, what is the effect on weight? What is the effect on weight when iron actually rusts? Again, a very important question. Uh, huh, intuition was wrong. The same thing actually Vikram happens to us. We think we are only made for this part, but no. We are made for that part which we can't even think of. The same logic is here. Out of our 100% capability, we are working only on 10, that 10% 10 which we think we are. But no, you are actually not looking at that 90% capability. Yes, please remember that. Fine. So my question was, what is the effect on weight? Will weight increase? Will weight decrease? Will weight remain same? Or we can't say anything. We can't say anything. So my question is, when iron is rusted at that time, its weight is going to increase, decrease, it will be same or we can't say anything. What is the correct answer? And yes, again, this part is important. Important one, asked in the examination again and again. So Vikram is going with option A, that is weight is going to increase. So Kavita, Anushka, are you also with the same answer? If yes, Vikram is absolutely correct. Very good Vikram. Please remember, whenever we, there is a rusting of iron, this means here, oxidation process is taking place. Oxidation. Right? So here, because of this rusting part, the weight is actually going to increase. Right? So here, the correct answer is going to be option number one. And if someone has given Bihar PST paper, which, which was conducted last, last week or last, last week, I guess, there also the same question was asked. Fine? Okay. So let's move forward to the next question now. Uh, let me tell you about the example official application. There's an example official application which is one stop solution for all the government job aspirants. What all we have here? We have live paid courses with the test series. We have free subject wise and topic wise quiz with the report card. We have job alert, admit card, examination date. All exam previous year PDF with the solution. We have free all India scholarship test with the report card. Then we have topic wise free live classes, free full length sectional test with the report card. Free exam wise PDF and practice at PDF. And if I talk about this current affairs, daily, weekly, monthly current affairs, unlimited subject wise practice questions, all these at a single platform, just go to the Play Store, type example over there, click on the install button, click on the open part, just do the registration and start using it. Simple. 
Okay. So next question is lime water becomes milky when it is exposed to air due to presence of what? Lime water turns milky because of the presence of what? Is it carbon dioxide, nitrogen, oxygen or sulfur dioxide? What is going to be the correct answer? What is going to be the correct answer here? Lime water becomes milky when it is exposed to air because of the presence of what? So, is it CO2, nitrogen, oxygen or SO2? What is the correct answer? Please give me this answer so that we can proceed with other questions as well. Yep. So, Vikramayat is with C that is oxygen. Okay. But let me tell you if I am talking about this lime water, please remember, yeah, CO2, that's totally correct. So, Vikram Aitya, you are absolutely correct. When we are talking about this lime water, this turns milky because of the presence of carbon dioxide and it is the important one. Okay, let's move forward to the next question. Since we are talking about the lime water, we must be aware of this formula. So, chemically, lime water is what? Lime water is what? Is it calcium hydroxide, sodium carbonate, sodium hydroxide or calcium carbonate? What is the correct answer here? Kavita, absolutely correct. But I am talking about this question. Lime water is what? Is it calcium hydroxide, sodium carbonate, sodium hydroxide or calcium carbonate? What is the correct answer here? Lime water is what? Answer please. And after this, I am going to discuss about some important alloys. Chemical lime water is what? Is it calcium hydroxide, sodium carbonate, sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate? What? I guess again the comments are quite slow, huh? Ready for the answer, please? Vikramayat is with B, that is sodium carbonate. Okay. Kavita, are you also with B? No. So, yes, please remember it is going to be the calcium hydroxide that is option number a is going to be the correct answer fine so please remember lime water is what it is actually your calcium hydroxide now there is a question there is a question for you all first of all let us discuss this we have discussed right what what is the or what are the constraints of brass waiting for the answer please one by one we will be understanding this all this important one, then what we need? Yeah. Stainless steel. Yes, can you answer this part? I gave you some trick also for all these things. So, yes, how many of you remember? If I talk about brass, what's that? What is the constraint of this brass? I'll write some more. German silver. Yes, please start giving answers. What is the constraint of brass? Remember, please remember it is going to what? Copper and zinc. What is bronze? If I talk about bronze, it is what? Copper and tin. If you have forgotten this, I had a trick. Remember? So, Vikramayat is saying it's a copper and zinc mixture. Absolutely correct. So, I have given you the trick for everything. If I will go with this bro, bro means brother. What I told you, during the corona times, we did what? We actually started that Indian tradition, Namaste, right? So, bro, aapko koti koti pranam. Bro, koti koti pranam. In spite of shaking hand, we were saying koti koti pranam. So, that is what? Koti, ko, t. Ko for copper, t for tin. In the similar manner, when I was talking about stainless steel, remember? For the stainless steel, I was saying there is no such tension of rusting because stainless steel never rusts. For example, our vessels. So, if I talk about this utensils for vessels, they will never rust. So, there is no tension. Fikar nahi hai koi. Kya? We are saying fi kar nahi hai koi. Remember? So, fi for iron, chromium, nickel and carbon. Very good. Awesome Vikram Aitya. Then talk about German silver. There is no such silver present in the similar manner in the lead pencil. There was no such lead. So, yes, if I talk about German silver, no silver. So, I was saying, Q nahi hai ji. What? Q nahi hai ji. Remember? So, what is that? Copper, nickel, and zinc. So, now in this manner, we can remember all those particular alloys, right? 
Now, there's, there was some other questions as well. Let me move forward there directly. Just a second. So, we were discussing about, no, no, no. There were some questions. Actually, I wanted to ask you. Uh, just a second. It was in the ending, actually. Ha. Huh. From here, I'll start. Yes. So, this was the question from here. We are going to have some new questions. Yeah. So, my question was, what is the formula for potassium ion in the noble state? What is the formula for potassium ion in the noble state? Now, we know about the formula of the potassium. That would be K, right? So, what would be the formula for potassium ion in the noble state? Please answer, please. In the super fast manner, because I have some of the questions which are to be discussed in detail. Yes. What is the formula for potassium ion in the noble state? Now, what is the noble state? Here, we can take the example of 18th group, where already outermost shell is complete, right? Whether it is duet or octet. Now, if I'll go with the potassium, remember the first group, halina ki rab se faryad, so after sodium, this potassium comes in. And for the potassium, what is the electronic configuration? The configuration for this potassium is 2, 8, 8, 1. Now, for the stability, for the stability, it will do what? It will donate one of the electron. When it will donate one of the electron, it will become what? So, since it is going to donate one of the electron, it will become positive. Remember that part? One electron, whenever it is donated, it will give you one positive charge. So, here K plus is going to be the correct answer. Next, atomic number of hydrogen is what? We are aware of. When we are talking about this periodic table, we knew about the sequence order, right? Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. Remember? So, hydrogen is the first one. So, since it is the first one, so atomic number of hydrogen is also one. Now, here option D is correct. Now, I will take your time and here comes the question which is the new one because we have discussed all those questions that I have taken that in the super fast manner, but those were important. Totally correct, Vikram. Now, my question is, all the isotopes of same element have dash. Just think about it and then answer. Dif different atomic number and different atomic mass. Different atomic numbers and same atomic mass. Same number of atomic number but different atomic mass. Same atomic number and the same atomic mass. Please have a look at the options in a good manner and then answer me. Now I have to explain this part. Fine. So first of all, I will be taking the answer from you. Answer please. And that too in the super fast manner, please. I have some explanation here. So it will be taking time then. Vikram Aite and all the others which are present here, I want answer from everyone. No one? Okay. So if I'll go with this isotope, just have a look at this word. What? Isotope. Iso means what? Iso means same. If I'll go with this part, PE, what is that? Proton. Now, one thing which you have discussed, okay, Kavita is the one who has given answer in the super fast manner. Very good, Kavita. Kavita is going with C, that is same atomic number, but different mass number, right? Yesterday, we have discussed. If I'll talk about atomic number, which I'm representing by Z, it is actually equal to the number of protons, which is equal to the number of electrons, right? Now, if I'm talking about isotope, this means I'm talking about same number of proton. Same number of proton, that means it will be having same number of atomic number. Now, here what is given? Same atomic number, that's true. But please remember, it will be having different mass number. Very important part. Now, if there's an element X, the number which is given on the top, here, whatever it is, A, let us write B. This is actually your atomic mass or I'll write mass number and this will be your atomic number. Very important. Please remember this part. And here, whenever atomic number is same, but you have different mass number for any two elements. For example, it's another one. Why? It is having A and sorry, it is having A. Let it say it is having X and it is having B. So just see, same atomic number, but different mass number. <laughs> This is going to be C, where you can talk about a hydrogen. Hydrogen. 
वेयर वी हैव प्रोटीएम ड्यूटेरियम एंड ट्रिटियम राइट सो दिस इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ आइसोटोप डू नॉट फॉरगेट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ इफ आई गो विद द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आइसोबार्स हैव वॉट आइसोबार आंसर प्लीज आइसोबार यस प्लीज आंसर दिस एंड ओनली देन आई वाइंड अप बिकॉज यस्टर्ड वी हैव अंडरस्टोड आइसो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक वी हैड सम न्यूमेरिकल्स एज वेल नाउ वी हैव अंडरस्टोड आइसोटोप्स सेम नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स द थिंग विच इज लेफ्ट इज आइसो बार वॉट इज आइसो बार सो टिल द टाइम यू आर गिविंग मी आंसर आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट दी वर्ड आइसो बार आइसो वी नो दैट आइसो मीन्स सेम बट इफ आई गो विद दिस बार यू मस्ट यू अंडरिंग सर वॉट बार डेट टू इन केमिस्ट्री बार इज द लोकेशन वे वी गेट दोज एल्कोहलिक ड्रिंक्स राइट बेड प्लेस बट टेल मी वन थिंग वेर दैट इज माई मदर वेर दैट इज विक्रम आय विक्रम आय मदर वेर दैट इज कविताज मदर हूज हु एवर मदर इट इज मदर्स विल ऑलवेज से बार इज द रॉन्ग प्लेस वॉट आई एम सेंग वेर दैट इज माइन मदर दीपनीज मदर वेर दैट इज विक्रम आय मदर हूज एवर मदर इट is she she will always say bar is the bar is actually the worst place never go there all the mothers are same that is sabki maa ek jaisi hai maa is same what i am saying for the bar remember all maa will say never go there maa is saying no to bar what same same type of maa that is maa maas fine so it is having it is going to have the same mass number but different atomic numbers very very important do not forget so here kavita has given the answer sir a that is same mass number but different atomic numbers right so yes let's have a look at the options vikramath is also with a very good so here if i'll go with this option a that's correct <laughs> now you can talk about the examples so you can talk about 14 c 6 or 14 n 7 so what is happening here if i'll check the above letters data 14 14 so what they are having they are having the same mass number so everyone's ma will say never go to bar it's a worst place right but they have different different atomic numbers right so in this manner whenever options are there please noted down protium deuterium tritium that is we are talking about hydrogens isotopes same number of protons but if i'll talk about isobar same mass number but different atomic numbers example you can talk about 14c6 or 14c7 that is of carbon and nitrogen respectively so here what's the correct answer the correct answer is going to be a that is same mass number but different atomic numbers got my point okay so yes now it's the time where we are saying goodbye we'll be meeting after the diwali right so yes very happy diwali to everyone burn crackers and yes enjoy that part fine okay then bye bye everyone please take care if you have any sort of doubt comment section is always there for you i am always there for you we'll be meeting post diwali bye bye enjoy take care happy diwali once again